Greetings coders. Today we're going to talk about adding styles in a much more efficient way so that we don't have any deprecated tags and so that all of this work that we've had to do could have been accomplished much more easily. So it's important to see how it works when you're doing it in line. And now I'm going to show you how to create internal styles. If you looked at your slideshow, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and that there are three ways to use them. You've been using inline styles. That means you've been typing them right in the line. Today, we're going to learn internal styles. So let's see what that looks like. First of all, your internal styles go in between your start and end head tag. So I'm going to go in between here, and I notice that this does not have a correct document title, so I'm going to copy this and put it there. There, now I feel better. So the internal styles are a style sheet, which is written in HTML the way I'm writing it here. And in between the start and end style tag goes a different way to format styles. This is called on line 10, I'm going to put some CSS. So let me first describe to you how CSS is different from HTML. So you begin with a selector <clears throat> and then you type a declaration. The declaration is in curly brackets, and it begins with a property, and it includes a value. So this is a CSS rule. And let me show you what's wonderful about them. I'm going to create a CSS rule for H4. That's the heading 4. So I'll type my selector, H4, and then I'll type a curly bracket. Visual Studio Code automatically closes that for me. So I'm going to hit my Enter key because I like for my rules to be on one line. And what I'd like for H4 to always be is this color of brown. So I'm going to copy just what's inside the quotes and put that here. When you create a CSS rule, you always put the name and the value with a colon in between them and a semicolon at the end. So I'm going to save that. And what it's saying is, please make every single one of my H4s this color of brown. So I just typed that one thing. And look what I can delete. I can delete this. I can delete this. All right, I've changed all of my H4s. I guess there was only two of them. Let's do another one. Let's say, let's do a table tag so that all of these things can be taken off. Any HTML tag can be a selector. So one curly bracket, enter. First thing I'd like to do is uh, make the background color of every table be this. So I'll start typing background and I can see background color. And what I want it to be is FFE699 pound sign. FFE699. Save. So now I can take off this background color from every table. There are three of them. Is it sad to know that all of the typing that you did before we're undoing? But what I wanted you to see and understand is that you can do this once in CSS. If you're using HTML, you have to do it every time. Let's do the widths. Every table, I put width equals 800 px. So I'm going to add another rule to this. Width 
colon 800 px semicolon so let's see I took it off of that one I can take it off of this one and I've got one more to take it off of this one all right now I want to take off cell padding equals 20 px and add that to here cell padding colon 20 px save now I can take this off so look at how it saves so much typing so there it is let's do some more styling how about we make the TDs all have a vertical line of top. Another style rule. TD curly bracket enter. V vertical align. Top. Save. So now I can take this off. In a minute, we're going to get rid of that center tag. Did I only have two TDs marked with vertical align top? No, there's the third one. This, because it's unique, I'm going to leave in here. I think that's my last one. So another thing I can do is make all of my P tags be this brown. That's going to save a lot, isn't it? So let's create a style for P. Curly bracket enter. Color. And it's that same brown. So now I can go through all of my P tags. Oh, there's an H3 that I need to change, but we'll do the finish the P tags first. Just all of this typing that we did last time, all of these inline styles, which as you can tell, it's valuable to have inline styles because sometimes you need it. I'm not sure why that's there, but this needs to be the end of the P tag. Um, all right, we need to do an OL style of brown and I believe we need to do a UL style of brown. Didn't I have a UL? Yes. So let's come up here. And I'm going to show you how here to do two styles at once. Three even. P, comma, OL, comma, UL. Save. So now I can take the brown color off of the OLs and the ULs. Oh, I should just add H3 to it. Let's do that. Comma, H3. There, now I can take this off. And this off. You can see why CSS became so popular. It just saves so much work h3 there's a p that i missed here's an ol i think that's all let's take care of the h1 which is text align center 
font family and color. So I'm going to put it up here above everything. It's sort of nice, I think, sometimes to type things in order. H1. We'll begin with text align center. And then we'll add color. And it's that same brown. And what else did I do with the H1? Font family. Font family Verdana. You'll notice here they have four typefaces listed here. The reason for that is because if you type Verdana by itself and somebody opens your website on a computer that doesn't have Verdana, then this is the instruction to, after you try Verdana and can't find it, go to Geneva. If you can't find that, go to Tahoma. If you can't find that, just use a sans serif font. So it's really good to use the list. I'm going to save that now and get rid of all of the styles here in H1. Amazing, isn't it? A save. Now let's look at it live just to make sure Everything has remained the same. Oh, it looks like I didn't do the cell padding. Or if I did it, it didn't work. So I'll type a forward slash and an asterisk. And then at the end of it, an asterisk and a forward slash. So let's go over here. And let's go to W3Schools CSS cell padding. Let's just see what they have to tell us for cell padding. I don't see the word cell padding here. Cell padding specifies the space between the cells and its contents. That's what I want. And you can see here, they're using that same format. The styles are between the heads. They just said padding 15px. Let me see what I said. I said padding 20px. So why wouldn't it be showing? Maybe it wants to be on the TD, the individual TDs. save. There it is. So it needed to be on the TD. Now this is a perfect example. If something isn't working and you're not sure why, going to W3Schools is your best bet. HTML and CSS changes all the time. All the time. So that's an important thing to know. Now let's talk about centering the table because that's the only piece of code that's left that we haven't taken care of. So here I've set my table width. In order to center it, margin left and auto. And then below that, I'll add margin right and auto. Now because I've set the width at 800, it will know this is the instruction of what to do with the margins on the right and the left. If I hadn't set the width first, this wouldn't work. Let's save and see if it's working. There it is. Everything is centered, and now I can take off the center tags. And then I'll have nothing red left on my website. Save and refresh. Looks great. So the very last thing I'd like to show you in today's lab is the way to validate your code. So the first thing I'm going to do to validate my code is copy it all. Control A, Control C. So I've copied all my code, but I'm going to, in the URL area, I'm going to type new validator because W3 Consortium has a good one. 
So the first thing you want to do is check by text input. And then you want to get rid of the text that's there and paste yours. Here's my check. So it's telling me on this website I have one, two, three, four, five bad values. I think what they're telling me is that the width attribute on an image is not proper CSS. So I see that on all my images I've said width equals 300. Let's do something up here with our styles. I'm going to type an HTML tag of IMG, curly bracket, and width 300px, semicolon. Now I can take this off of every single one of my images. One. two, three, and I think there's one more, four. Save. I'm going to select it all, copy it all, and try again. Control A, delete. Control V, check. Okay, I have a width attribute on a TD element, and it's telling me that's on line 94. Let's go to line 94. There it is. And there's that width. So, I'll tell you how we're going to deal with this. Something I haven't really taught yet, but it's important to know about, is classes. So I'm going to give this TD tag an attribute of an, a class attribute. Class equals, and here I can name it anything I want. I could name it Rachel. I could name it, oops, I spelled my own name wrong. I could name it anything I want, but just for me to understand what it what it really is, I'm going to name it TD width. TD width. And then up here in my styles, the way that I help my browser to find which class I'm going to style, a class is denoted by a period. So I'll put dot TD width and the curly brackets. So what I'm saying to my browser is dot, the browser reads that little dot as the word class. And I'm saying to my browser, if you see the class called TD width, oops, please make it, what did I say, 375px, 375 pixels. Let me save that. So again, to make something unique, and different from all the others. Where was I? Line 95. Now it's line 100 because I've added others. But I'm giving it a class called TD width, and I'm setting that width up here. So if I make a class down in my HTML, then up in my styles, I style that class with a period. So let's save this. I'm going to control A, control C. Go back to my validator. Control A, control V, and check. All right, document checking completed. No errors or warnings to show. I will ask you on project one to validate your code. It will be part of the grading rubric. So go to your um, new HTML checker and make a bookmark.